So we've talked about Marjorie Greene on the program before. For those of you who don't remember, this is a congressional candidate running in Georgia's 14th congressional district, and she recently won her primary. She was running against a still extreme, albeit less cuckoo Republican. Uh, he lost, and this individual is almost certainly going to be going to Congress, not just because this is a deeply red district, so if you win the Republican primary, you basically get that seat, but her Democratic opponent just dropped out not too long ago. And if you're not familiar with who Marjorie Greene is and what she represents, let me refresh your memory or introduce you to her. Um, and I'm sorry if you were living in ignorant bliss, but this is what she's all about. I'm Marjorie Green, and I approve this ad. America is the greatest country in the world. We need conservatives in Washington that will keep it that way. I'm running to stop gun control. Open borders. The Green New Deal. And socialism. Democrats fight for their socialist agenda every single day. I'll fight even harder to stop them. I'm Marjorie Green, Republican for Congress. Save America, stop socialism. President Trump declared Antifa a domestic terrorist organization. I have a message for Antifa terrorists. Stay the hell out of Northwest Georgia. You won't burn our churches, loot our businesses, or destroy our homes. I'm Marjorie Green, and I approve this message. Yeah, it's like indistinguishable from satire. Like 10, 20 years ago, if you would have showed me a skit from like Saturday Night Live or The Onion, um, you know, where they're trying to make fun of Republicans and be overly hyperbolic, I think that they do something like that. But now like what I would have previously thought would have been satirical, it's so loony, is now the reality. And this is an individual who isn't just going to be going to Congress. She's a rising star in the Republican Party. She is a rising star in the Republican Party. This is a member of QAnon, a conspiracy theory group, and that's not me attacking her. She openly embraces the label herself. On top of that, Donald Trump tweeted about her. People are really looking to her as a future leader in the Republican Party. And I mean, given how far to the right this party has shifted, uh, you know, embracing people like her, it's not that surprising. But still, I mean, when you compare her to someone like Mitt Romney, I mean, the difference is night and day. Um, and I hate Mitt Romney. So, I mean, this is like a new low even for the Republican Party. But yet, I'm afraid this will be the new normal. But anyways, the reason why we're talking about Marjorie Greene is because she will be going to Congress and she is already preemptively attacking one of her colleagues, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And for whatever reason, she decided to take a shot at AOC because she thinks that AOC is not intelligent. So she tweeted out, as a blonde woman, I would like to take a moment to thank Congresswoman AOC. She has single-handedly, I think she means handedly, put an end to all dumb blonde jokes. Blondes everywhere appreciate your service and your sacrifice. Now, this is weird, like it came out of nowhere. This is your future colleague who you're attacking for no reason. I mean, I guess you don't care that the workplace is going to be a little awkward next year. Uh, but I mean, she attacked AOC out of the blue. And she was so proud of this, she pinned this tweet to her Twitter feed. So, I mean, if you are going to be going to Congress, you think that you would be, you know, staying focused, you know, crafting your agenda, trying to let people know what you are going to be fighting for. But this person, I mean, she's just a Trump sycophant. If you go to her website, she doesn't really have any policy proposals, but she says, I back Trump 100%. So if Trump loses this election, then what do you stand for? You're just going to go there and keep the seat warm? Like people like this, I don't know why you run for Congress if you literally don't stand for anything. And you're attacking AOC because you think that she's stupid. You're a member of QAnon. You think it's morally and legally justifiable to kill Black Lives Matter protesters who you deem Antifa. And you're criticizing somebody else's intelligence level? Now, after she threatened to extrajudicially murder Black Lives Matter protesters, well, since she was inciting violence, Facebook took down her post, and she then took to social media and cried about how she was being censored and her First Amendment rights are being violated. If you think that a private company deleting one of your videos where you're inciting violence 
is you losing your First Amendment right. You are the one who's stupid, not AOC. You are the one who uh, doesn't know anything about the Constitution, which you are supposed to be uh, protecting if you're a member of Congress. But regardless, AOC basically had the best response. And what she said here made me laugh out loud. So she said, don't worry, Miss Green. I completely understand why you need to swing plus miss at my intellect to make yourself feel better. You seem to have some trouble spelling your own insults correctly. Next time, try single-handedly. <laughs> It'll work better. Good luck writing legislation. <laughs> That was good. That was really, really good. Um, I mean, look, if you're going to say, I don't agree with this policy that you're proposing, okay, you can have that disagreement and debate about it, but you're criticizing her intelligence. Like, this is your future colleague. Again, it's so weird that you would do this. This is bizarre, right? And I'm not one to stress about the need to uphold decorum. I don't care about civility politics and respectability politics. I don't care about that, but this is this is bizarre. This is immature. And you're criticizing her just out of the blue saying, hey, you're stupid. Huh? Let me pin this tweet to my uh, Twitter feed. It, it's bizarre and weird. And if you're going to criticize somebody's intelligence, at least make sure that you get the fucking tweet right and you say single handedly instead of single handedly. Now, generally speaking, I don't care if somebody makes a typo. Usually you can put two and two together, fill in the blanks, figure out what they're trying to say. But you're trying to say that someone else is dumb. But you're making yourself look like a dumbass as you tweet to her. Like, if you're going to say somebody else is stupid, at least get the tweet right. So I'm uh, I'm loving this tweet from AOC. But of course, Marjorie Greene responded to that saying, AOC, please, no one cares about typos. While you were growing up in socialist boot camp, I don't even know what that means, I was creating thousands of jobs, $250 million in revenue in 11 different states. Your Marxist Green New Deal will destroy millions of jobs, and I'm going to put it through the paper shredder. Okay, so now she's changing the subject because she made a fool out of herself. So, you know, she's trying to argue that AOC is stupid, but she made herself look like a dumbass. So now she's just saying, oh, well, nobody cares about typos. But you just said that, you know, you really are thankful that AOC is so stupid because the dumb blonde joke is no longer relevant. But you're kind of disproving your own tweet. How can you say someone else is dumb if you can't even insult their intelligence level in even a mildly competent way. And then when she says, well, you know, maybe it's not me who's the dumbass, maybe it's you, you say, oh, well, nobody cares about typos. But you implied that you do if you were concerned with her intelligence. Like, you're just a psychopath. Like, why are you going to Congress? Like, you don't stand for anything. You don't know a single policy that you want. You're just with Trump 100%. Like, what does that even mean? And you say that she went through a socialist boot camp. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? That she went through college? That she has a degree? I don't know what that means. If anyone goes to college, does that mean that we've gone through socialist boot camp? I don't understand what that means. And she says that the Green New Deal is Marxist. The Green New Deal is Marxist? Do you know what that means? Do you know what Marxism means? How is a Green New Deal going to destroy millions of jobs when the entire point of the Green New Deal is to subsidize and invest in renewable technology instead of fossil fuels. Like wind, solar, hydro, these are all the future. Like this technology is what we should be investing in because climate change is a reality. So what AOC is doing with the Green New Deal is saying, hey, rather than, you know, letting China or some other country be the number one manufacturer of this technology that will be the future, why don't we actually do that here so we can create jobs and also stop climate change uh, in the process. But you're saying, oh, no, 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 this thing that you support that's going to create millions of jobs is actually going to destroy millions of jobs because I don't know what it is. And on top of that, I think it's Marxist because anything that I don't like is Marxist. I mean, do you even understand the terms that you're throwing around? Like you call people Marxist, communists, when the people who you're attacking oftentimes these are neoliberals. They're free market capitalists. The Democratic Party is not a socialist party, but she accuses them of being socialist and whatnot. And her entire thing is to go to Congress to stop socialism. That's another part of her agenda. Stop socialism, save America. Except, do you even know what socialism is? Like, I just don't understand how someone like this, who is not a serious person, can run a successful congressional campaign and get elected to Congress. And still, not even try to play the part. I mean, everything in this country is so stupid right now. And Marjorie Greene is an embarrassment. But she is one of those Republicans who has no shame. Like, she's in her weird little conspiracy cult slash bubble. And, you know, 
as long as the people around her like what she's doing, as long as she gets likes from, you know, the far right, then she's happy with it. But if she looks like a clown to the overwhelming majority of the country, she doesn't care. Um, so it's, it's embarrassing, but this is what we're working with. Like the Republican party is going to continue to produce figures like Marjorie Taylor Greene because they're shifting to the right. Like 10 years ago, they were trying to really explicitly go after people like this. And now they're going to represent a solid portion of your party. So, uh, you know, even if other Republicans are condemning her and saying she's even a little bit extreme for us, this is what happens when you appeal to these types of people. This is what you get. And now she's going to go to Congress. Um, so yeah, I'm really glad that she chose to interact with AOC. If you're going to take a shot, don't miss. And in this instance, she missed and she face planted.